Pokemon is a series that is known for its occasional yet wild inconsistencies that are as funny as they are baffling. Many of these have puzzled fans for years, but prepare to be puzzled no longer, cause today I am going to explain some of them once and for all. Some of these are indeed official answers, which I will be sure to specify, but others are more theoretical, so you'll have to let me know what you think of these explanations in particular in the comments below. But with that said, let's get right into it. A pretty infamous inconsistency occurs with Lance and his underleveled Dragonites. In Pokemon Gold and Silver, Lance is the champion of Johto, and uses multiple Dragonites on his team, all of which are underleveled, meaning they are at a level under which Dragonair normally evolves into Dragonite. This is pretty glaring to anyone who's played the Johto games, and it's pretty ironic considering Lance plays a role in defeating Team Rocket in Gold and Silver, who themselves are attempting to force Pokemon to evolve early. This issue has been pretty noteworthy in the community for a while, but here is what I personally consider to be the explanation for this. The first time we see Lance in the game is after battling the Red Gyarados at the Lake of Rage, who is actually a victim of Team Rocket's broadcast signal that, as mentioned, is forcing Pokemon in the area into evolution. So by being in the area to try and stop Team Rocket, it makes perfect sense that Lance's Pokemon would inadvertently be exposed to their broadcast as a result, and as such, could be considered victims of this broadcast themselves, explaining why they appear to be underleveled in your battle with him. Here's another well-discussed inconsistency. Many people over the years have pointed out that Mewtwo, oddly enough, sits in Pokedex order ahead of Mew, despite literally being the second Mew as its name states. So what's the deal? Shouldn't Mew be 150 and Mewtwo 151 since it came about later? Well, not exactly. Here's the way I see it. Mew is a mythical Pokemon, and by definition as a mythical, it's not even known concretely if it even exists at all. This is stated as such in some of Mew's Pokedex entries, so basically, since Mewtwo was created from Mew's DNA that was found by scientists, but not taken directly from Mew itself since it's so elusive, Mewtwo being earlier in the Pokedex is simply a result of it being created before Mew was officially confirmed to exist without a shadow of a doubt. Since the Pokedex is more or less just a record of documented Pokemon species anyways, I personally see this as a pretty solid explanation for the discrepancy. A pretty funny inconsistency involves Wooper, as despite having no arms, it is somehow able to learn Ice Punch. So, um, how? This doesn't even remotely seem explainable, does it? Well, not exactly, but I feel like I have a pretty decent explanation. As revealed in a recent leak of Pokemon Gold and Silver, before Wooper was the lovable, armless chap we know him to be today, it was actually a quadruped in an earlier iteration of its design, meaning it had two pairs of legs. While not exactly arms, it's a lot more plausible that this version of Wooper could stand on its hind legs and give you a good icy punch with its forelegs, so it's possible that Ice Punch could have been given to Wooper when it looked like this, and upon its design being changed to its current design, its moveset was simply kept the same and remain unchanged. Next, let's take a look at one inconsistency that has an official explanation. Splash is an infamously useless move that is iconically used by Magikarp, but the thing is, despite being called Splash, this move is normal type, not water, and plenty of non-water types can learn it as well, such as Clefairy and Hoppip. Well, believe it or not, it actually makes more sense that Hoppip can learn Splash than Magikarp, as the original Japanese name of the move is Hop, explaining why it is normal type. 
As for the reason why it was translated as Splash instead of Hop, this would have been because Magikarp was originally the only Pokemon who could learn the move. One of the more prominent and memeable Pokemon inconsistencies has to do with Rhydon, as it is able to learn Surf, despite being four times weak to water as a rock ground type. So what exactly is the deal here? Well, I think we can reach a pretty reasonable conclusion by taking a look at an old interview with Ken Sugimori, the lead Pokemon designer at Game Freak, which was kindly translated by Pokemon historian Dr. Lava. In the interview, Sugimori says that early on, many Pokemon were designed with the intent that they would be able to assist humans with various tasks, and he specifically cites ferrying them across the sea as an example. While it doesn't really look like Rhydon was created specifically to carry people across water, it was one of the very first Pokemon ever created, and at one point looked considerably different, and notably a lot less rocky. Maybe when it was created in this form, it was thought of as one of those Pokemon that could provide that ferrying service, and therefore, the idea of Rhydon surfing just stuck, and it's been there ever since. Another detail mentioned in that interview can possibly explain another inconsistency we have, which is the fact that Horsey and Seedra are categorized as the Dragon Pokemon, despite not being Dragon types at all. Well, in this aforementioned interview, Sugimori also stated that many earlier Pokemon were made to be more dinosaur and monster-like. Additionally, he also stated that the idea of types didn't come into play until about halfway through the development of Pokemon Red and Green, so it's entirely possible that Horsey and Seedra were designed earlier on as these more dragon-like monsters, which is why they were given the classification. Then, once types came into play, Dragon became one of them, which they were probably given initially. But then, once Game Freak began balancing everything out, they realized Dragon was extremely powerful, which resulted in them severely limiting the amount of Pokemon that had the Dragon type, which resulted in it being possibly stripped from Horsey and Seedra. Lucky for them, though, they were able to gain it back with their evolution Kingdra in Gen 2. One thing that tends to be in the back of my mind while I'm playing the games, and I'm sure many of yours as well, is the case of the preschooler and school kid trainer classes. We've always been classically told that you get to become a Pokemon trainer when you reach the age of 10, but it's pretty clear that these school kids, and especially the preschoolers, are under 10 years old, so how are they able to be out in the world already battling Pokemon? Well, doing some research into this reveals the answer, and just how much the Pokemon world actually does revolve around Pokemon, because it's very likely that all these kids are simply training and studying to become Pokemon trainers, much the same way that someone would train and practice to get their driver's license, for instance. This is because we already know an establishment known as the Pokemon Trainer School already exists, and many of the school kids tell you that they are studying there. As such, the preschoolers can be assumed to simply be in the preschool division of this school, and ultimately, this amounts to the fact that Pokemon is simply what you go to school for in the Pokemon world, and the diploma you receive upon graduating is a starter Pokemon and the license to be an official Pokemon trainer. This is even corroborated by an official novelization of the Pokemon anime, which states that in the Pokemon world, once kids reach age 10, they are effectively considered adults, as if they had just graduated high school, and are free to pursue what they want as adults. So all these school kids and preschoolers are simply just learning how to battle and train Pokemon under the tutelage of the school before they graduate and get the chance to go on an official Pokemon adventure themselves. Here is a really classic one that I am going to do my best to explain. In Macargo's Pokedex entries, it states that its body temperature is 18,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, that sounds pretty hot, but it gets a lot hotter when you realize that that is nearly two times hotter than the surface of the sun. 
So how is this even possible? How is Macargo not immediately melting everything around it and reducing it to ash? Well, this is what I've got. Macargo's body temperature could actually be referring to what it's like on the inside of its body, while the outside of its body has safeguards in place to ensure that that temperature stays internal. This would make Macargo an endotherm, which means that it regulates its body temperature from the inside of its body, which ironically is the opposite of what actual snails and slugs are, which is ectotherms. Still though, I think this explanation still has merit for this reason. It actually very closely parallels actual volcanoes, where the magma comes from that Macargo itself is based on. Think about it, on the inside of a volcano is boiling hot magma, just waiting for an eruption to send it flying all over the surrounding area. However, on the outside, things look cool and a volcano pretty much appears as just a regular mountain. I think Macargo is mimicking volcanoes in this way, where that insanely hot temperature the Pokedex speaks of is on the inside, while the outside is relatively tame and keeps us all safe from the inferno that lies within. One inconsistency that concerns the anime in particular involves Lorelei. If you're an avid anime fan, you may know that Lorelei is known as Prima in the anime instead, which is really weird considering almost every other character has the same name as they do in the games. Well, there's an official explanation for this discrepancy, and it comes from 4Kids Entertainment, the company that originally dubbed the Pokemon anime into English. According to them, Lorelai's Japanese name is Kana, which is two syllables long. Meanwhile, Lorelai is three syllables long, so her name was changed to Prima, which is also two syllables, to presumably make the translation seem more seamless on screen. While this explanation does make sense, I hardly believe that Lorelei is the only character whose English and Japanese names don't have the same amount of syllables, so it's somewhat odd that Lorelei was singled out like this. One of the older inconsistencies in the series that has been discussed for a while concerns two of Kanto's gym badges, the Soul Badge and the Marsh Badge. Given out by Koga and Sabrina, if you pay close attention to the names of these badges, it seems like they should actually be switched in terms of who gives them out, as Sabrina's Marsh Badge would make way more sense for Koga, who uses poison types and lives in a city with the Safari Zone, and Koga's Soul Badge would make a lot more sense with Sabrina and her Psychic types. Because of this, many fans have theorized that the badges could have been possibly switched at some point in development for some reason, which actually could be true. The Japanese names of the badges are simply the Gold Badge and the Pink Badge, which doesn't imply any kind of switching, meaning that it could just be the case that an error was made during the localization process, although it does still seem like a curious mistake to make. Alternatively, it could be explained that at one point, Koga could have been planned as the 6th gym leader instead of the 5th, which would make a lot more sense given the structure of the region and the fact that Fuchsia City much more naturally leads towards Cinnabar Island, the site of the 7th gym. So maybe the Marsh Badge was intended as the 6th Gym Badge all along, with Koga as the 6th Gym Leader. But then, Koga was changed to become the 5th Gym Leader, while the badges ultimately stayed in their same positions. This one could go either way, honestly, depending on what you want to believe, but it's an interesting conundrum for sure. So those were some explanations for some of Pokemon's biggest inconsistencies. What did you think of my personal explanations? Let me know in the comments and be sure to like and subscribe for more videos. You can also greatly support the channel and the making of videos like this by listening to my Pokemon remixes on Spotify and by watching my Pokemon Cardinal series here on YouTube, which is sincerely, sincerely appreciated. With that said, I will see you all soon with another video. I love you all, and until the next one, as always, I will smell you guys later.